The small translucent globe weighs 6 grams. The one with the same form but filled with metal weighs 117 grams. What do you think? If I let them fall at the same moment, which one will touch the ground first? We are gonna check this. The two globes touch the ground at the same time. Why is this? Without going into details, the mass of the objects removes itself from the formula which is used to calculate the acceleration to the ground. This means there is only the gravity and form that counts. That's why both objects touch the ground at the same time. Despite, if both objects would touch my foot, the field globe would hurt more. But it's not the developed subject here. Now, we are gonna try to determine the relation between the time and the traveled distance during the acceleration. So that it would be easy to calculate, we will work with an inclined plane that will slow the fall. If two uniform objects with different masses are released at the same time on an inclined plane, they will also arrive at the same time. The metal object weighs 588 grams. The one in hard plastic weighs 87 grams. Their mass is smoothly distributed and the constraints linked to the friction are limited. Here is a contrivance which releases a marble on an inclined plane and a pendulum which will determine the time units at the same time. One go and back of the pendulum corresponds to one time unit. The goal will be to put a close pin on the inclined plane where the marble will be on time unit 1, then another on time unit 2 and a last one on time unit 3. You can shorten the length of the pendulum if you would want that the time periods would become shorter. 3, 2, 1, go! After multiple trials, the three close pins were placed. You see that the distance between the close pins increases step by step. This is logical. There is an acceleration. Between the start and the first close pin there is 21 cm. Between the first and the second 63 cm. Finally, between the second and the third 105 cm. With this, I deduce that the speed of the marble increases. If I measure the distance between the start and each close pin, I respectively obtain 21, 84 and 189 cm. What can you deduce from this? If necessary, put this video on pause. Have you found it? At time 1, I have 21 cm or 1 time 1 time 21 cm. At time 2, I have 4 time 21 cm or 2 time 2 time 21 cm. At time 3, I have 9 time 21 cm or 3 time 3 times 21 cm. 1 time unit, 1 square times 21 cm. 2 time units, 2 square times 21 cm. 3 time units, 3 square times 21 cm. So, I see that the covered distance evolves proportionally with the square of the time. The coefficient of proportion is actually the acceleration. I can thus conclude that the distance is equal to the acceleration times the time squared. And, in my example, the acceleration is 21 cm per time unit squared. Later, thanks to Newton, you will learn that in this A there is among other things the famous G, the acceleration of the gravity on the surface of the Earth, but also the friction forces and the inclination angle of the rail. Like Aristotle said, don't believe me, try it yourself at home and verify the result. A small advice, it's not always easy to obtain sufficiently accurate measurements. You need a minimum of discipline when you execute your experiences. With that, you avoid sources of errors. Have fun!